In the beginning, John chapter 1 verse 1, the corny Greek manuscript says, Jesus is not God. Good evening, greetings everyone, and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. Please consider subscribing and supporting this channel, even if we agree to disagree. Please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Thank you. In the Bible, John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Does this verse indicate the deity of Jesus? Why is Jesus referred to as the Word? What does the original Kony Greek manuscript say? And we're talking here about the original Kony Greek manuscript. If God the Son is not God the Father, according to the concept of the Trinity, which God revealed himself to man? Did John attempt to rewrite Genesis? Who is the Word that became flesh? What does it mean for Jesus to be the Word of God? Is Jesus the beginning of God's creation? If Jesus is created, then can he be the creator? Why would John 1 verse 18 say that no one has ever seen God? What influenced John's prologue in John 1 verse 1? When John calls Jesus the Logos, is he referring to the Greek philosophy? Is the Gospel of John, then, a forgery? What did really happen in the beginning? At Blogging Tawheed, I address the false claims made by Christian apologists about Islam and the Muslims. I provide evidence and debunk their misconceptions, while I emphasize on the importance of enlightened dialogue. I also highlight the need for personal exploration and critical thinking as an invitation to discover the truth for themselves. See, the Church Fathers were the first to come up with Fast and Furious way before Hallward. They play games and they played Fast and Furious with everything else and they did it with the Bible, unfortunately. When the word God is used for Moses, they put a small g, small m for me, my, and mine, small h for he, him, or his. Any pronoun, they put a small letter, lowercase letter. When they refer to Jesus, everything is capitalized, however. Capital H for him and his, capital M for my and mine, and therefore, they put a capital G for God since the Christians claim that Jesus is God. They play games with the Bible. They have changed this Bible according to their desires. They took matters in their hands as if they were directly inspired by the Almighty. Now, the Greek word for angel is angelos. I want you to remember this etymology that that is simply means a messenger, angelos. When the disciples of Jesus, of John the Baptist, came to see Jesus, the word in Greek used there for disciples is angelos. They do not translate that as angels in the Bible, but as disciples. On the other hand, when the disciples are somehow connected to Jesus, they translate it as angel or angelos. And see, this is how the Christians will do anything to make up that Jesus is some sort of a divine being. Disciples of John the Baptist are described as angelos in Koine Greek, but as disciples in the English Bible. And Christians will keep coding according, 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 according. They have no idea what they're reading. Little do they know, more than 90% of what they're reading is not even Jesus' teachings.
So according to John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, how many words of Word do we have? In the beginning was the Word, this is number one, and the Word was with God, number two, and the Word was God, number three. Excellent. What is the Koine Greek word for Word? The word commonly translated as word is logos. The ancient Greek philosophers developed this concept of logos, which could more accurately be translated as reason, although there is no exact English equivalent. To the philosophers, logos was probably heading to the direction of what we call pantheism. This concept was taken up early in the first century by the Alexandrian Jew Philo Judius and subsequently entered Christian thought and ended up in the Bible, unfortunately. Now, how many words of God do we have here? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Here is number one, and the Word was God. So we have one. And we have two. Excellent. What is the corny Greek word for God? Now, if this is all Greek to you, let me learn you. Simply, corny Greek means common Greek, which is the Greek used during the Hellenistic period, an early Roman Empire from roughly 300 BC to 380. It was preceded by ancient Greek and followed by medieval Greek, the language spoken by the Eastern Roman or the Byzantine Empire until 1453. So just as the English and Spanish have evolved over time, so has Greek. Anyway, while the New Testament was definitely originally written in Koine Greek, the majority of the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic, but it was translated into Koine Greek as the Septuagint in the mid-200 BC. So the Koine Septuagint was what many Greek-speaking Jews and then early Christians used as their Bible. Greek grammar. What does it look like? Well, it looks like Greek, which has a subtle but important difference from most other languages, including English. So, Koine Greek does not have an indefinite article. What are the indefinite article? A and AN, but has a way of implying an indefinite article. It has its own way of implying an indefinite article, as we will see in the next slides. So if I want to refer to a particular person by the name, by a name, I should place a definite article, the English the, before that name. Thus, if I want to refer to a person called Flacco, I should say the equivalent of the Flacco. Otherwise, I mean an determined, determinate person called Flacco, any, any Flacco. Similarly, if I want to refer to God, I should place a definite article before Theos. Otherwise, I would probably mean any god, which was common for the Greek. Remember that Koine Greek is uncapitalized, so we cannot use the initial capital to determine the person's intention. And at the last picture, you'll see that this is the Greek, today's Greek uh, verse, and it translates into in inarchy, in o logos, ke yo logos e pros. Ton theos ke theos en ologos, usually translated as this. That is not a valid and reasonable translation, given my explanation of the word. Where yes, the first reference to God has the definite article. The second reference to God does not. What's interesting is that the Jehovah Witness translate this verse completely different than the Trinitarians, which is absolutely amazing to see. And you can see at the lower picture, you can see 
where the indefinite article is missing, where it's supposed to be with the God. Inarhi in ologos, keio logos in pros, tonteios keithoios in ologos. In arhi, in o logos, ke yo logos in pros, ton theo, ke theos in o logos. The first reference to God has the definite article, ho theos. The second reference to God does not, it's ton theos. So, literal translation would be, would look like this. Was a God, by the way, means a righteous person, a messenger. A compromised translation would look like this. And the word was divine, which, by the way, divine does not mean God. So while it is possible to omit the definite article, the best way to understand what early readers might have understood from John chapter 1, verse 1, is to look at the ancient Coptic translation. So Coptic does not have an indefinite article, making it possible to say a God explicitly. So this indicates that the early audience for John most likely heard a God, not God. So Christian scholars, however, know where this verse came from in John chapter 1, verse 1. But see, church fathers and the Christians won't tell you that. A Greek philosopher Decades before John's time, by the name Philo Judeus, born 15 to 10 BCE, in his philosophy he wrote, in the beginning the word was with God. So if Philo Judeus wrote this philosophical statement, how did it end up in the Bible and became the word of God? Well, John copied Philo Judeus into his gospel, the gospel according to John. Well, I should say, it should be the gospel according to Philo Judeus. I challenge all biblical scholars and doctors of divinity combined, especially those who call themselves experts in the Greek manuscripts, which is the basis of Christianity. The manuscripts were all in Greek, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the other 27 books. I challenge everyone to deny that this statement is historically linked to philo Judeus. That's why we need to go back to the Greek, the original Greek manuscript. In the beginning was the word, we're going to replace the word with God, every word with God, if Jesus is God, right? Now read the whole thing. Does that make sense? The Koine Greek for God is Theos. In John 1, chapter verse 1, it is Hotheos. It is not Tontheos. Hotheos literally means they, God. In the Indo European language family, where the English language came from, the English language has a system of translation when you have a proper noun, you put an uppercase letter, a capital letter. Big G. When it's a common noun, you put a lowercase letter or a small G. So, here in this verse, the English Bible puts capital G for God. In Hebrew, in Greek, in Aramaic, and Arabic, there is no such thing as capital letters, and there is no such thing as small letters. Therefore, the word was with God, stand for God the Almighty, with capital letter. And we agree with that. And the word was God. This is G in capital letters. What is the Greek word for this second word? God. What does the original Greek manuscript say? Tontheus in Greek means a god. A god should have a small g, according to the English language. 
a god with a small g means any god. That's not a proper noun. And the word was with a god. Was a god. So the big question here is, why do we have the capital G and the small g again in the second word for God? First capital G for God is valid and acceptable. You know, the second capital for G is wrong because you're creating different meanings. Why did they translate it as capital G instead of small g? In the original Greek manuscript, the first word for God is different than the second word for God, the second God. Okay? The first one is God the Almighty with capital G, and the second word for God is Godly with a small g. First word is Hotheios, the second word for God is Tontheios. There is a difference, but the English Bible is giving them the same meaning, which it doesn't make sense. In the beginning, the word was with God. We, the Muslims, agree the word was with God. The Quran says Jesus was a word from God. The word is a messenger from God. And a matter of fact, every prophet and messenger sent by God, the Almighty, was a word of God. We don't object to that. But the Christians want to make it exclusive to Jesus that he was a God with capital G. We say he was a God with small g, meaning godly, righteous, and messenger. This is what the original manuscript says in Greek. In the Quran, Jesus was also a God, meaning a godly person, a righteous person, a messenger. Thank you for watching.